This video is part of our tutorial series for the SIG300. I'm Jazz, an AI avatar, and I will guide you through this tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to integrate the SIG300 IO Link Master into a Rockwell PLC environment. In the first step, I create an empty project and establish a connection to a Rockwell Compact Logic controller. The SIG300 can be integrated in two different ways, as a generic Ethernet IP module or with the help of an EDS device description. An integration via an EDS file has several advantages, as all the parameters required for integration are contained in this file. For this reason, I have opted for an EDS integration in this example. The first step is to import the EDS into the Rockwell Studio 5000 program. To do this, we click on Tools, EDS Hardware Installation Tool, and run through the wizard. The SIG300 is now included in the hardware catalog and can be attached to the application project. To add to the hardware tree, right-click on Ethernet and select New Module. The SIG300 device can be found using the search function and can then be added to the project as an Ethernet IP device. We now assign a unique name and enter the IP address at which the device can be reached. The SIG300 supports three connections, exclusive owner, input only, or listen only. With the exclusive owner connection, the Ethernet IP scanner, in other words, the controller, establishes a connection to the device and exchanges the process data cyclically via the input and output assemblies. In addition, the SIG300 is configured via the configuration assembly when the field bus connection is established. With the input-only connection, an Ethernet IP connection is also established. However, only the data of the input assembly, that is, data from the SIG300 to the controller, is transferred cyclically. The output assembly and the configuration assembly are not used in this case. The listen-only connection is similar to the input-only connection, with the difference being that no separate Ethernet IP connection is established. Instead, an existing connection is used. In this case, I do not change anything here and use the exclusive owner connection. This also shows how much user data is exchanged via the input and output assembly. The requested package interval specifies how quickly the process data should be exchanged between the SIG300 and the controller. In this example, I select an update time of 10 milliseconds. The SIG300 supports a minimum update time of one millisecond. To establish the Ethernet IP connection, the project must be transferred to the control unit in the next step. The I.O. status indicates that the connection was established without errors. In the next step, we will take a closer look at the configuration options provided by the configuration assembly. Changes to the configuration only take effect as soon as the Ethernet IP connection has been re-established. This is the case if, for example, the SIG300 or the PLC is restarted. Here, you can set which port is to be operated in I.O. link mode. This is the default setting for all ports. If standard I.O. devices are used, the port mode must be changed. The operating instructions describe the values that are valid for the corresponding parameters. In my case, I have connected a SICK MPB10 I.O. Link multi-physics sensor to master port S1. As specified in the operating instructions for the sensor, the sensor supplies 20 bytes of process data. The data for port S1 starts from byte 4, beginning with the IO-Link port qualifier and a reserve byte. The actual IO-Link process data starts from byte 6 with a floating point value which contains the temperature of the MPB10. The RMS velocity in the X direction can be found in the byte 10 to 13. 
Now you have learned how to integrate the SIG 300 IO Link Master into a Rockwell PLC environment. In the next tutorial, we will look at the interpretation of the process data and how it can be used in the application program. Thanks for watching.